You're listening to Good Morning Marlow on Marlow FM 97.5. So let's start off with how did you get into fitness? That's the that's the big one. Right. Well, I'm uh, I'm as you know, Jill, and as prob- probably some of the listeners know, I'm not the youngest spring chicken in the universe. In fact, I'm quite old. I'm 64. So, uh, and, but I haven't been into fitness all my life. Many people who are still who are as fit as I am at my age have been in fitness for a long time. They've been maybe they played rugby at school, maybe they were carried on boxing, maybe they were in the military, and they've been fit all their life, and they've been fit and they carry on their fitness into yep. their 50s and beyond that's not me at all i mean, i wasn't a sporty kid at school yep. i avoided doing games i avoided playing sports everything i mean i i don't know if i've managed to fool the games teacher with my handwritten notes <laughs> pretending to be from my mum saying yeah. please excuse christopher from sports today because he's got a nasty cold <laughs> he's got an upset tummy which i probably <laughs> spelt wrongly or something uh, but I never filled them. But I, I was not a sporty kid at all, and I didn't actually come from a sporty background either. Um, I don't have any uh, any any brothers or sisters, so there's no no fight ups yeah. over toys in our household. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I ever remember seeing my mum or my dad ever run anywhere, um, let, let yeah. alone anything sporty. No. So I, I didn't have a sporty background mm-hmm. at all, um, and I mean that that. What I, what I did have as a background of, of enjoying myself and going out with friends and so on. Um, I wasn't miserable not having a sporty background. It just wasn't anything that, that, that was in, isn't part of my life. Yeah. It wasn't something that I did, you know. It just it, wasn't on your radar. It wasn't one of my hobbies. It wasn't things I did. You know, I did lots of other, there were lots of things I did do, but sport and exercise wasn't one of them. Yeah. Um, and that was all well and good until I got to about the, uh, the age of 50 when I went to see my GP and my GP pointed out that I, that I got on the scales and uh, GP said, oh, you're, um, you're 18 stone, Chris, you're 5 foot 10 and 18 stone and I think your weight's been going up ever since I started seeing you sort of 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, I think it's about time you, uh, you took something to uh, your, your fitness under control because if you don't, then I'm not entirely certain I'll be seeing you again in 10 years' time because if you keep on putting weight on as you have been doing so, um, then you're going to end up in a, in, in a rather bad state. So Gosh. now is time for you to do something about it. That must have been quite um, hard to hear, you know, especially if it was like so gradual over you know a course of time you're not aware that it's really happening but to get that kind of shock from the doctor that must have been quite hard to hear it was a shock and it was an amazing timing because there was another i had another visit to another doctor just a week apart just a week after that which is to go to the aviation medical examiner because i had a hobby and in fact i still have a hobby of flying small planes i have, oh. a, I have a private pilot's license i can fly a little two-seater plane or a little four-seater plane nothing nothing bigger than that nothing with more than one engine nothing with more than three other passengers or three passengers and me um, but uh, I had my aviation medical coming up and as you will probably expect in order to have a license to fly a small plane you have to mm-hmm. pass a medical yes and as you get older that medical gets a bit more stringent yes and a week away a week after my GP's visit and the GP read the right act to me basically um, I had my aviation medical test and I failed it it was so first time ever I, I couldn't pass it because the I, I could have passed it had I still been in my 40s right but when you turn 50 the the requirements get a bit stringent uh, and i failed it for all sorts of things blood sugars my aerobic capacity was too low Mm -hmm. um and um my uh my my overall height compared to my waist which was Mm -hmm. my waist was about 40 inches in those days from 5 or 10 40 inches it just doesn't cut it for the the ratios yeah um and uh so i in in one week i got a a death sentence from my gp and i had my my favorite hobby taken away from me chris by by my uh by the other doctor so that's kind of the what what started me off and that is (laughs) That is a double whammy. That really is tough. And how did you turn that around rather than, you know, a lot of people might sink and give up and think, well, I can't do anything about this. How did you turn, you know, that really kind of upsetting news into something more positive? Because it clearly has had a really positive effect on you. Yeah, well, I discussed it with my wife. I've been married about 10 years by that stage. And my wife, uh, Jenny, has always been into fitness. Uh, she, she tried in the early days to get me interested, but, but she could see I wasn't interested. I was much more interested in going out with my mates to, <laughs> to pubs and so on and, and, yeah. and uh, having a, what I thought was a good time. 
Um, and um, she, 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 said, she said, Chris, you've got to do something about this. I, I, I've been on your mouth, so now you've got the, your aviation medical examiner taking away your main hobby. You've got your GP saying, mm-hmm. saying you know, you, you're, on, you're on the way to, to, to misery unless you do something about this. Um, the, one of the tests, the GP sent me for some blood tests, and it came back that I was pre-diabetic. Gosh. Which means I didn't, I didn't have diabetes, mm-hmm. but I was on the way to it. So mm-hmm. you don't, People say you have diabetes or you don't. It, it, I mean, it's just because you're above or below a certain measure, mm-hmm. but you slide up that measure going towards it. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it isn't suddenly you're 0% diabetes, then you're 100% diabetes. It's something you gradually you pick up. Yeah. And, and that little stage is called being pre-diabetic. Um, and Jenny, my wife, was very concerned. I did something about it, and I decided, okay, this, this I really do have to do something about it. And so I decided to... Um, to do to learn what I needed to do to lose weight, and, and I think by the time you get to, to your early fifties, and I was fifty at the time, um, you don't really need much in the way of education to mm-hmm. to get get started. The, the, four, the four word uh, fitness plan is all that I needed, which was eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it can be a lot more complicated than that. Mm-hmm. Indeed, I, I, it is much more complicated than that the further you get into this. Yeah. But for 90% of people, for 90% of the time, just mm-hmm. eating less and moving more is what you need to l- lose body yeah. fat and get fitter. Yeah, I mean, let's, you know, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. Just start with the basics. Absolutely. And is is there anything in the that to do with the magic moment? Is that? Oh yeah, the magic moment. Yes, is a, people talk to me about the magic moment because I, I talk about the magic moment quite a bit in my videos and it's, uh, it's uh, in the book that I've written. Um, and the magic moment is is well, let's go back a little bit. So what I started doing, I started doing more exercise. I started, mm-hmm. I started doing some exercise. I'd never done any exercise before. I went to a gym which was next to the office where I worked, and uh, it scared me to bit. I didn't didn't like, didn't like anything. I, I mean, everybody in the gym was at least half my age, if mm-hmm. not if not young. Younger, yep. and already at least twice as fit as I was, and and so and they and they were still going to the gym. They were still getting fitter. They still wanted to get fitter. Yeah, uh, and they're already much fitter than I ever than I had ever been to my knowledge. Certainly yeah. in the past two or three decades. But uh, having looked around at various things and decided lots of things weren't for me, I eventually discovered the cross trainer, oh. which I discovered this, this was something that I could do without being the centre of attention because I didn't want to be fit because I, I thought everyone was looking at me because here was I, this this overweight, uh, overaged bloke in oh. the gym, didn't look like I belonged there at all. Uh, yeah. But I got on the cross trainer and I, I started in the cross trainer and I actually quite enjoyed doing it. Uh-huh. And, and eventually um, I, I got kind of hooked on it. So I went to, to, did 40 minutes worth of cross trainer every morning on my way to and from work or the way to work and walked a lot in my spare time and cut down what I ate. Um, and eventually, after about two months, uh, I couldn't go to the gym one morning to the cross trainer because I had a, on a business trip somewhere else, I think going up to, up to Leeds on, on the train. And I was trying to work out how I could get to the gym on the way to King's Cross as opposed to going to where my, my, uh, my gym normally was. And I, and I worked and I, and I suddenly realised to, to my surprise or to, to, to my disappointment that I couldn't find a way of getting the gym in. Uh, and then I sort of almost sort of fell over. That's a magic moment for me because I, I suddenly, if, if just rewind that tape a bit, I said, I discovered to my disappointment yeah. I couldn't do the gym. I, I was actually annoyed. I was sad that I couldn't do my gym that day. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't do my exercise. Yeah. This, this isn't the Chris Aremba that, that anybody would have known for the previous 50 years who'd done nothing like exercise. I've yeah. done everything to avoid it. And here I was regretting the fact that I couldn't do it. It become so much part of your lifestyle yeah. and just your daily habit. Yeah, I'd, I'd become enjoying doing it. I mean, this was about two months in. I'd noticed on getting on the scales that I was losing weight mm-hmm. and I was feeling better for it. And Jenny was saying all the encouraging things as well. Yeah. So um, I call that my magic moment because from, from that moment on, I realised I'm doing exercise not because um, I was told to by the doctor or either of the doctors yep. or by Jenny, but I was doing exercise because I actually wanted to. That wanted I was enjoying to. it. Yep. That, that's a magic moment. And, and now when I talk to my personal training clients, I hope and I desperately... Uh, encourage them to look for their own magic moment when when they suddenly realize that they're not doing this because i'm telling them to do mm-hmm. it or that their gp or anybody in their life is saying to do it but they're actually doing it because they want to do it yeah that's what i've tried to see in my own personal training clients do exactly it's just like a light bulb moment isn't yeah. it when you realize the the benefits and how much happier you're feeling in your day-to-day life and it's almost like the small 
small things that change, isn't it? Just like a general um, feeling of fitness, like on your day to day, you know, around the house, around the shop. You just feel a bit brighter in yourself, not so sluggish, that sort of thing. It's not always about the aesthetic, is it? It's about that internal. Yeah, spot on. If, any, if anybody had asked me, even that morning, why was I going to the gym? I was saying, oh, because a doctor told me to. A doctor told me to lose weight. So I've got to go to the gym mm. to, to do some exercise. Yeah. I'll do some exercise, some movement from somewhere. Yeah. And going to the gym on the cross trainer was something that I quite enjoyed doing. Um, but I wasn't doing it because I wanted to do it. I wasn't doing it because it, it was something that, that was uh, inside me that was driving me onwards to do it because it was something I wanted to do. I was doing it because I had to do it. Yeah. Um, and then from that moment onwards, I suddenly realised, hang on, I, I, I'm missing the fact that I can't do it. I mean, I've got a valid excuse. I could tell the doctor I had to go on a business trip so I couldn't do it. Yeah. But, but I still tried to find a way of doing it. Exactly. It's like reframing it. It's like, I get to do this. And that's what I call my magic moment. Yeah. No, I love that, Chris. That's so exciting. And it didn't just stop there it didn't just stop that you were enjoying going to the gym and working on your fitness and the positive impacts in your life you took this to a whole other level which is you know not something that everybody does I certainly haven't done it either but you're a world champion yeah, that's that... true. I mean, I, 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 I got so hooked into going to the gym and I, and I started meet, meeting friends at the gym and I, uh, I, I kind of got involved with the, the um, people who to look at, take, us, take fitness not as a hobby or even as a personal training business, but as their entire uh, profession, yeah. their, their entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one, day I was, uh, well, one day I was gate crashing because by this stage I'd now lost my job because I'd probably spent too long down the gym rather than in the office. <laughs> Um, um, we don't recommend that, people. No. Um, and I was in, uh, I was gate crashing Jenny's business trip to Los Angeles. So Jenny, this is not bad. Jenny had a trip to Los Angeles, so I was kind of she had, she had proper business to do, and I went along as a as a gate crasher, sort of gate crash in the hotel rooms. And uh, Jenny obviously went off to do her work every day. And you're down on Muscle Beach. And I was down on Muscle Beach, absolutely, <laughs> literally. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Not, not initially, but eventually, yes. Amazing! Um, and uh, I, met, I met a guy there who uh, who suggested doing some personal training, which I did, a chap called Rob Riches. Um, and Rob Riches became uh, my personal trainer for that week um, and has now become a, a firm friend. And he sees me whenever he's in the UK visiting his parents because he's English, but lives in America. Lovely. And I go and see him. And he's a, a world champion fitness model. Mm-hmm. And he got me into it. So Brilliant. as a result... I am the world champion fitness model for the over 50s. Ah, oh, fantastic. So, so fitness modelling is like bodybuilding, but nicer. That's why I, that's why I describe it. It's like bodybuilding, but with bigger bigger shorts, bigger trunks, and bigger smiles and smaller muscles, but, but a very much a well-defined, well-balanced uh-huh. physique. Um, so, and I enjoy doing it. So I've done, nine, done nine competitions nine. so far. Yeah, and I'm the, the over 50s world champion. That's and they, fantastic. Um, for somebody who, who, like 15 years ago, would run a mile, no, I couldn't run a mile, couldn't run a yard, mm. uh, would do would, would, do anything rather than doing exercise or sport that's quite a, quite a transformation i suppose that is one extreme to the other isn't it that is phenomenal and are you still um training for that now then have you got any competitions coming up now uh, I, I'm probably even I think I'm getting a bit old for this, but oh, I, I kind of like to do one more. I'd like to get yeah. ten. I've done uh, what I've now done five in in the UK for an organisation called Miami Pro. It's mm-hmm. called Miami Pro, but it's in the UK. I've done three for an organisation called Pure Elite, and I've, I've done done one in Muscle Beach, um, which was great. Oh, I love so, that. Uh, I think I, I'd like to do another Muscle Beach contest. I think because um, they're in May and September every year, um, and I don't think that there's going to be one this September. So. Maybe Maybe next May. Yeah, well, let's just get this year out of the way and hopefully things will pick up again. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you've been writing about? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the book is sort of 50% my own story, which I've, I've told about told you about in the, in the last break. Um, and the other 50% is really advice for other people who are over 50 um, and they want to follow me down the same kind of road. Maybe not all the way as being on stage, but at yeah. least getting a little bit fitter and a little uh, less body fat. Exactly, because it isn't just all about getting on stage, is it? It's about the day-to-day life and the day-to-day just enjoying yeah. and being fit for your life. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I have a little phrase I use a, a lot, in fact, which is that uh, if, you get fat, uh, if you get fit when you're over 50 and you lose some body weight as well, then it's, it's going to mean so much to you for the, for the, for the rest of your life. You, you, um, it's, it's something that will stay with you and you'll enjoy your life. The improvements in your self-esteem are, are um, amazing. 
That is fantastic. And what yeah, the, the, actual, the actual phrase I use is it's going to add years, uh, add years to your life and life to your years. Life to your years. I like that. Just, that's, yeah, that's a kind of it's a phrase I came up with ages ago, and I use it all the time. <laughs> I like your your phrases. You've got some good ones. I'm I'm writing down furiously, actually. <laughs> oh, you should, you should see that. You should see the appendix Z of my book, which lists all my fitness phrases. You're going to start seeing me using them. You'll, you'll be copywriting them all now. <laughs> so you talked about um, you started on the cross trainer, which I think is is very much the entry point for a lot of people going into the gym i completely get that i was there as well you walk into the gym it's completely daunting you feel out of your depth and you just hide on your on the cross trainer you almost create your own little bubble and cocoon how did you um branch out from the cross trainer because with your your training and being a fitness model you've got to be lifting some weights that didn't just come on the cross trainer and how do you encourage and um, people you know that are new to fitness particularly in the the older age bracket well, i'll tell you what happened to me first then i'll tell what I'll explain what i do to, to other people again in the older age bracket but what happened to me was uh, on that california trip i mentioned to you before uh, i meant i met this personal trainer who's i say now a good friend of mine rob riches um and by that stage i'd lost about three stone in weight i'd come down from around about 18 stone to about 15 stone which is what from 115 kilos down to about 90 kilos i think um and so i was quite proud of that as well so uh, so i told rob when we started uh, started to meet before we did our first personal training session together i said isn't this, isn't this great rob I've, I've come down in weight from look i've been on the cross train now for what, best part of a year i think every morning and i've been watching what i've been eating and look i've come i've lost so much weight isn't that brilliant and he said well yes chris it is but it isn't really mm. and i said what do you mean he says well you've lost weight uniformly from body fat and muscle you, you, yeah. you, you've done no weight training yeah you've done uh, you haven't added much to your to, you've, you've, you've eaten less certainly but you haven't eaten better quality no you haven't started adding more protein to your diet for example yeah um and as a result what's happened is you've you've lost body fat great but you've lost muscle mass too yeah um if you carry on that way you're going to become a, a scrawny weakling i'm not sure i actually use the term scrawny weakling but <laughs> it, it was heading that way and he, he introduced me to a subject which i hadn't heard of before called sarcopenia which is sarcopenia is a gradual loss of muscle quality and amount mm-hmm. as people age and it happens naturally yeah um and, unless you do something to to help fight it and, and that includes going to do some uh, weight training in the gym some resistance training in in the gym yeah and rob said i mean if you carry on the same way you, you're going to end up frail as you're as you're old you, you won't be fat but you'll be a, you'll be a frail old man you know un- unable to pick up a saucepan or anything because you're just losing weight you're losing muscle weight yeah as well as losing fat weight mm-hmm. so why it's great to lose body fat it really is great you need to do something to add back the yeah. muscle uh, and you know th- 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 that really sort of hit home because i thought i was doing quite well at that point i was, I was quite happy with my pro- progress and i said i thought i was doing so well as well <laughs> yeah so then rob showed me around the gym and uh, eventually got me hooked on that as well so he we started talking about body composition and mm-hmm. uh, i purchased some body composition scales which shows you what percentage of your body is muscle and what percentage of it is fat mm-hmm. the biggest thing is water of course most people know there should be about 60 percent water but to get rid of the 60 percent water then start thinking about how much muscle how much is fat mm-hmm. um and, and indeed if you don't do anything about it if you just lose weight well, just lose weight it's, it's not very easy to lose a massive amount of weight but if you do then if you don't tailor what you lose then you're going to lose pro rasa muscle and uh, fat in the same ratio that you have them so yeah. you're going to lose fat and you're going yeah. to lose muscle and your percentage of fat is going to be the same percentage of a smaller overall weight and this is not the kind of message i try to give to my clients these days so n- now i'm qualified as a personal trainer in the uk obviously um and i try to give that message to my clients as well which is great to lose fat but you don't want to lose muscle you want to do some some wor- uh, work in the gym exactly and uh, to, to which involves uh, muscular development work mm-hmm. to add back the muscle that you've lost in the in the diet plan and in the exercise routine you've been doing the cardio type exercise mm-hmm. the, the heart rate raising exercise yeah. that helps burn calories you, you need to add back see the, the some good calories in terms of decent food and nutrition and use muscular development work such as resistance training to do it as well and, I, and this is what i have to tell my clients because a lot of my clients come and say oh, I, don't want, I don't want to do i don't want to put weight on i, I don't do muscles i just want to lose weight and and i'm just no you don't you want to lose fat you don't want to lose weight you want to lose fat yeah um and that's kind of the first conversation i have yeah (laughs) there's still this huge um misconception and and fear and i understand it that uh, if you're lifting weights that you're going to get bulky 
and people were thinking well, I'm trying to get away from being bulky and I don't want to lift yeah. weights and get bulky but it isn't how it works is it Chris? No. The, the phrase I hear from a lot of people especially bear in mind that most of my clients in fact all of my clients personal training clients are over 50 um, they all say to me oh I don't, I don't want to put any muscle on I just want to be toned a mm. bit, a bit more toned well as, as I'm sure you know there's no such thing as, as toning a body or, or, or toning a muscle yeah. what, toning is actually the result of two things one is you actually make the mus muscle just a little bit bigger yeah and two, you reduce the uh, layer of body fat over the muscle. Yeah. So you can see it a bit more. Yeah. So it's toned because you can see the muscle. The muscle's just a, a just tiny bit uh, larger than it was, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the, the body fat that was covering in a thick layer has gone. And that makes you more toned. You can't turn muscle into... So you can't turn fat into muscle. No. But you, you can remove one. And in parallel, you can, you can add the other one. It's not the easiest trick in the world to be both losing body fat and adding muscle but it can be done but it's, it's not easy i've done it so but it, it's 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 not easy it's not easy it's definitely definitely challenging but as um as long as you acknowledge that you need to be working your muscles because it's not even just about your muscles it's about bone health as well oh, yeah, yeah. and particularly again as we're getting older um i know that for a lot of women osteopenia or um and osteoporosis but that that is also a factor for, for men as well. Yeah. I mean, what's good for muscular development is actually pretty good for bones as well. Yeah. So uh, if you eat the right things, then you find the right things include uh, all the minerals minerals and vitamins. And a lot of the, the vitamins uh, and minerals are great for, for bone health as well as helping work alongside protein in terms of rebuilding and regenerating muscle. So uh, if you eat the right things for, for, for muscle and to, and to grow your, your strength of your frame, mm -hmm. you find that the other bit of the strength that grows is that it's the bones as well. That's amazing. That's amazing. And how? Um, tell me about your three-stage fitness approach. What, what does oh, that involve? Right. Yeah, this is something that's documented in the book. Actually, it's um, it, it's the second half of the book. So it's not about my own journey from fat to fit. It's about the, the reader's journey from fat to fit. And, and it's three stage because the first, first stage gives them some, some tips for things to do. Um, and it's a, a 12 guidelines for, for life and things that they should try and do. But before they do that, they need to weigh themselves. Mm -hmm. And before they need to do that, they need to buy some body fat analysis scales, some body composition scales, because um, we've already talked about the fact we're not just looking at losing weight, we're talking about losing body fat. We're not, we, d we don't want to lose muscle weight. Mm -hmm. So the way you can do that is you can buy some body fat analysis scales. It sounds very scientific, but I mean, most most shops sell them. Argos sell them. Boots sell them. Loads, loads of other shops will sell body fat analysis scales, and you can get them for thirty pounds and just sit in, the, in in your bathroom. And, uh -huh. you, and it won't just show you how much you weigh every morning. It'll show you what percentage of of your body is fat, what percentage of it is muscle, mm -hmm. and what percentage of it is water. And then you can use those all those facts to to yeah. guide your day yeah. to try and improve those percentages. Um, and good so data. So so the first stage is basically if you stand on the scale today and then you send on scale this time next week if if those numbers have all moved in the correct direction which means pr the overall weight's gone down probably but the body fat percentage has certainly gone down if that's if, if that's working then you don't need to do anything other than carry on doing what you're doing mm -hmm. and those are the 12 guidelines for, for stage one but if you can't make that progress if you're for some reason you're not able to stick to those 12 guidelines um in, in that first stage um then you go to stage two which is much more rigorous and involves spreadsheets and calls writing down uh, what, what you're doing writing down using my fitness pal to record your calories to record your nutrition it's quite an onerous thing to do stage two yeah and, and the whole idea is i hope put the put the frightness on people saying oh i don't want to spend ages look, looking at my fitness panel on my phone i don't want to start recording mm -hmm. to, I don't, having to go to the gym i don't want to have to do all these things so if you don't want to do all those things stick in stage one yeah and how do you stick in stage one by making by following the stage one guidelines yeah that take you from being uh, uh, from having a certain weight to a lower weight but more importantly than that from having a higher body fat percentage to a lower body fat percentage because if your body fat percentage is going down, then your 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 bo your bone and your muscle, mainly your muscle, is going up. Because there are there aren't many other variables to talk about. We don't worry about organs because you can't do much about that, <laughs> or the weight of the brain, or the weight of the hair. So we, can't, we can't worry. We don't worry about that. Um, we worry about uh, water, and and most water in the body lives in muscle anyway. Yes. So m most water is is intramuscular. So if if you look at a if you look at a steak, then a steak is all all nice and juicy. And, and sorry, sorry for any vegetarians listening. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but for 
that imagery. But yeah, the if, vegans. Yeah, if you pour any water onto a steak, you can imagine a steak would would soak, would soak it up, would absorb it. Yeah. You know? A big, big, juicy steak will soak up some water in the way that a block of butter won't. Mm-hmm. So water will just run off butter. So, yes. So, so body fat does not absorb water, but muscle, which is steak... Uh, it does absorb water. So a lot of the water in the body actually lives inside that steak, which is inside your muscles. Mm-hmm. So the, the only... Uh, and you can't do very much about the bone apart from eating healthily, so let's ignore that as well. So the only variables we've got to play with are, are body fat, muscle and water. And muscle and water live together. So if your hydration goes up, your muscle volume goes up. And if your muscle volume goes down, your hydration level goes down. Yeah. So it's, so it's not like we're, we're dealing with loads and loads and loads of complex maths here. There, no. There, there aren't that Good. many variables... <laughs> to look at but I say what I want to do is the people in six to stage one which is do live healthily do, yeah. do the right kind of things um, if they want to go if they can't do that if, if, they, if they and if I haven't put the frightens on them enough to move to stage two then they go to stage two mm-hmm. uh, and, which will help them They'll, mm-hmm. it's, it's very rigorous uh, diet, uh, diet and exercise program, program but there will be a magic moment in there for everybody they yeah. will start to enjoy it as they see the, yeah. the body fat moving in the right direction and then stage three is, 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 a, is a maintenance phase afterwards after they've reached their targets fantastic it really is that's like layering isn't it and just gradually building in habits and you know adding in yeah so i'm trying to keep it as simple as i can but while at the same time trying to make it as enjoyable as possible absolutely remember remember my catchphrase we're trying to add years to your life and life to your years. Life to your years. That's fantastic, Chris. That's brilliant. And I hope. And how can people find out more about you and getting hold of this brand new bit book that you've released? Well, the book only came out yesterday. In fact, I know. So it's brand Hot new. Off it's, the press. it's not in bookshops yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's available to order on Amazon, by the way. So if you type in my name, Chris Zaremba, which you can, do, most people know how to spell. If they don't, so it'll be on the Model FM website somewhere. Um, and um, the book's called Fat to Fit at 50. You're listening to Good Morning Marlow on Marlow FM 97.5.